Well, a warm welcome to this talk, Monday the 13th of February. Now, I'm going to keep this very brief because there's a serious national question I think we need to be asking ourselves in the UK that applies to the pandemic and, and ongoing into the future. Um, did more people die in the pandemic than needed to die? And did some of those die as a result of the medical interventions that were being recommended at the time? Now, I'm going to read you some uh, guidelines that were published in the, on the 3rd of April by the NICE organisation, which basically tells us what to do medically in this country. COVID-19 rapid response. So this is part of their guidelines here. Now, this is managing breathlessness. So this was published, remember, on the 3rd of April 2020. And they say this, consider an opioid and a benzodiazepine. Now, um, what they mean there is uh, an opium-based drug like morphine and the benzo benzodiazepine they talk about is midazolam. Now, this is a classical, well-tried, trusted form of treatment that we use for uh, things like terminal agitation, part of terminal care when people are dying of conditions such as cancer and things that are incurable uh, to, to, to manage uh, a peaceful death and it, it's completely the right thing to do in the vast majority of circumstances but what seemed to happen was nice just took that and transposed that into the covid situation and covid of course we know is an infection and most people can get completely better from it was this a fundamental mistake that they made that they transfer guidelines for uncurable conditions onto a potentially completely recoverable condition it could well have been the case because if you give these two together that stops people breathing opioids and benzodiazepines will depress uh, respiration and given that a lot of these people that were breathless anyway had acute respiratory distress syndrome um, and you suppress their breathing so if you have a lot of fluid in your alveoli you'll get a tachypnea you'll breathe more quickly to try and compensate and that can get you enough oxygen into your body to mean that you survive the acute episode but if you give these drugs and you get respiratory depression, I don't think you need me to spell out the, the consequences of that. Um, not enough oxygen, tissue hypoxia, and um, and death would be the, the result. So that's what they seem to do. This is the big question mark. So they said, consider an opioid and a benzodiazepine like midazolam combination for patients with COVID-19 who are at the end of life. But how many patients with COVID-19 would be at the end of life unless they had some intractable condition at the same time? And how do you know if they're at the end of life? I, I've, I've looked after hundreds of patients and think, good grief, they're, they're not very well. Um, but, but the vast majority of them uh, survive. With an infective condition, you can't really tell whether it's the end of life or not. How, how, how do you tell that with an infective condition? I'm not sure doctors, uh, GPs, certainly without sophisticated diagnostic testing facilities in the community, in the nursing home situation, will be able to tell that. And yet that was the that was the guideline. So how do you tell that at the end of life? I'm not sure that you can. I don't think that you can. And, and have even so moderate to severe breathlessness. So some people even with moderate breathlessness. So people that might have looked ill but had a virus that their immune system could have overcome and they could have recovered, could well have been given these uh, medications that resulted in suppressing their breathing. So, as I say, at the end of life, moderate to severe breathlessness are distressed. If someone's dying of an intractable condition, fine. If it's a reversible infection, perhaps not. And then the guidelines actually say this, and this is probably the most um, concerning part of this, really. Um, Sedation uh, and opioid use should not be withheld because of fear of causing respiratory depression. It's almost like saying the respiratory depression is acceptable. And I actually found this uh, quite alarming when I uh, checked it on, on, on Wayback Machine. I'm going to do another video with more details, but we'll just leave that there. This is the graphic here um, from Midazolam, for example. So we see that there was a massive increase. So condition that was fairly low there, a big increase there when the guidelines came out. It did go down a bit, presumably, when doctors realised what was happening. But then a gradual increase that went on all the way into the end of 22, 2022. So I'm just going to show you a few graphics now to illustrate this. And of course, the the, uh, the uh, links that the evidence will be in the description. 
Well, here's the data from openprescribing.net for various areas in the UK. So we can see up at the top there, we've got Northeastern Yorkshire. If you want to see your area, plenty more available uh, data is there. But if we look on, on the left-hand side, we see we've got 8,000, 6,000, 4,000. So that's like 8,000 doses there, plus another 8,000 there, plus another 7,000 there. And you can see these add up to quite really large numbers of uh, doses of midazolam that were given. And of course, we noticed the clear spike in doses, which was round about spring 2020. And we do notice some increased prescribing in most areas. In fact, all areas are trend upwards throughout uh, the rest of uh, 2020, 2021, and uh, indeed into 2022. Now, this is the openprescribing.net data for levomipromazine. And again, we see a definite uh, spike, which follows closely uh, after the release of the guidelines in spring 2020. And the third one we wanted to look at here was haloperidol. And again, we see a, a clear spike, clear spike in the spring of 2020, followed by, I think we'd have to say, increased prescribing on the right hand side of the graph compared to the left hand side of the graph. So clear data there that these drugs were prescribed more in a spike and uh, were prescribed more subsequently. So here we see the UK government data on deaths that are attributable to COVID-19 and we see a great spike in the deaths that occurred in uh, spring of uh, 2020. And we notice this consistency from our world in data with this large spike in deaths here, confirmed deaths from uh, COVID-19 in spring of 2020. Uh, this is associated with the Wuhan variant and then this large spike here associated with the Alpha variant. But of course, these end of life drugs were being prescribed from early April in 2020 all the way through into later uh, 2022. So I'm actually going to leave that there as a fairly short video. I will be putting more details up. But it's actually quite disturbing to think that potentially a lot of people that could have survived uh, didn't survive as a result of the uh, medical interventions that they received. Thank you for watching.